making our community safe again, thanks to a frontline fighter. Mobile phone masts, or cell sites, provide network coverage across the UK. Whenever we make a call or send a message, our phone hooks up to the nearest cell site. Without them, we wouldn't be able to communicate wirelessly, as we do every day. A cell site can be a huge mast in the middle of a field with lots of oblong white panels on. It can be something quite small and discreet that you may not even know is there. But ultimately, that allows us, as mobile phone users, to wirelessly connect to the network and communicate verbally with text messages or via an application. A record of every call and every message is stored by the networks and is a vital source of evidence in many police investigations. They are bound in law to preserve that data for 12 months and it is in effect the golden copy that it is preserved in a way that means we know that there isn't any deletion, it doesn't matter if a phone is lost or damaged or stolen or anything like that. Ben Kiefo is a former detective, now working for digital forensics firm Cyfall. What that data will tell us is details of what events have taken place, calls and texts, and use of the internet for things like WhatsApp or YouTube. Crucially, the data also records the time, the date, and the location of the cell site. In other words, police can check the date and see whether their suspect was in the right place at the right time. Which is exactly what happened in this case. There's been an attempted break-in and two men are making a run for it. But there's a police helicopter overhead, fitted with a heat-seeking camera. Got two runners, both with hats on, one with uh, a rucksack, running down to our Castleford Drive. But in the rear of the garden of the house, you're going to know. The helicopter team guides officers on the ground as the suspects try to hide in gardens. And they're in the trees at the back by the kids' swings and play area. The garden hopping now, just stand by. The two wanted men are desperate to get away, but the police are closing in. One of the suspects jumps the fence, but his partner isn't quick enough. There's one detained at the front by our officer, the second one's over the back fence. The second suspect thinks he's got away, but police on the ground are getting a running commentary. Well, stop there. He's in the house to your left. Your house to your left now, in the gardens there. He's going to come back out onto the road behind you. He's just walking round now towards yourself. The burglary suspect keeps on running. He's just nodding, nodding into the garden now. Right, don't patrol, go to the next house behind that the house there. So the back garden you're in, go over the wall of that house into the next one. It's currently in there. The net is closing in on the suspected burglar. He attempts to launch himself over the fence, but an officer grabs him and makes the arrest. Looks like the male's been detained eventually. Catching them was just the beginning. Police believed the two men were responsible for a spate of burglaries in the area. They cross-checked the suspect's call data with the times and dates of each break-in. All this data is giving us just that, data, and with data becomes an opportunity to investigate. It gives us an opportunity to see movements of that handset, and ultimately that can directly help criminal investigations because it can help see, for starters, is there activity on the phone and therefore the phone is switched on? And secondly, where is that phone located and does it assist us? putting the user of that phone in a particular area, which be can become crucial to an investigation. Cell site locations and call data often play a part in large-scale burglary investigations. 
it may be that there are several burglaries taking place on the night in question, as is sometimes the case. And if that does happen, is there evidence in the call data records to show movement to, from burglary offence one to burglary offence two and burglary offence three? And then there may be even be some intelligence, perhaps, that the individual has gone somewhere to sell the goods that have been stolen, for example, and the call data records could reflect that. Philip Ingram is a former military intelligence officer and an expert in the use of cell site evidence. Accuracy depends on the strength of signal, the number of cell towers that are around the place and the way your phone's communicating. It can be accurate down to a few metres. It will not give a certainty to turn around and say that this individual is in that building, in that room at that, at that time, but it can put you in the vicinity of it close enough. In this case, the call data records were crucial. One of the men was directly linked to five break-ins, the other to three break-ins. We are becoming a more technological society, aren't we? You know, we are using mobile phones more, we're using applications more. So I think cell site analysis is drastically changing the way investigations are completed, yes. And we are using cell site evidence and digital evidence a lot more than we were historically. So in some respects, you could call it revolutionary. The two burglars, Jorge Pinto Villegas and Herme Duarte Vera, were jailed for three years, eight months, and three years, four months, respectively. When it comes to cell site analysis and call data record analysis, I would say just about every offence, there's an opportunity. As network coverage improves, the quality of evidence provided by call data records looks set to improve, making life harder for the criminals. I think digital evidence is making a huge positive difference on crime fighting. As technology has moved on from 2G to 3G, 3G to 4G, and now into 5G, Investigation techniques are moving in line with that. Methodologies of investigating the call data results, i.e. the results provided by the network, those techniques are advancing and moving as well. And that is allowing investigations to glean a huge amount of information about mobile phone movement, and therefore movement of individuals with mobile phones. So I think digitally the net is closing, uh, as much obviously as criminals are taking steps to try and circumvent that taking place. Thank you.